New graphics cards are finally here. After months of rumors starting way back in March, the RTX 2080, 2080 Ti, and 2070 have finally been announced. And depending on who you ask, they're either 50% better, twice as good, or 10 times faster. So what's the deal? These new cards offer a significant improvement in raw power. The way we've traditionally measured this is in terms of floating point operations, or T-flops, which is essentially math per second. But with these new cards, that doesn't quite tell the whole story. Let's start with the specs. These new NVIDIA GPUs are based on a new architecture called Turing and manufactured with a new 12 nanometer process. Now, remember, a new process usually means better power and speed and efficiency, but it's also kind of marketing nonsense. The important part here is that the 2080 Ti, their new flagship card, is shipping with 4,352 CUDA cores with a boost speed of 1,635 megahertz. This is a big jump up from the 3,584 cores at 1,585 megahertz for the 1080 Ti, which was Nvidia's previous flagship card. This also gives the 2080 Ti a potential 14.2 teraflops, which puts it above the 12.1 teraflops of the Titan XP, Nvidia's $1,300 number cruncher. But in this case, T-flops aren't everything. In addition to NVIDIA's usual CUDA cores for graphics processing, these Turing chips also include both tensor cores for machine learning and the new RT cores, which promise to finally bring real-time ray tracing to games. You can check out our previous video on this topic, but ray tracing is a super demanding form of lighting in games that can create hyper-realistic scenes, but at the cost of tons of processing. These chips will also all come with the new GDDR6 memory, which promises a big increase in memory bandwidth. That's important for moving pixels and crunching data. GDDR6 isn't quite as fast as the high bandwidth memory used on the top AMD cards and the Titan V, but on cards with a lot of memory, it can come close. Now, you've probably seen Nvidia throwing around some crazy performance numbers for these RTX cards, saying the new cards will be 10 times faster or more. So what's up with that? These numbers are referring to a new metric Nvidia has created called RTX Ops, which is essentially how good a card is at ray tracing. Now, these new Turing cards have specialized hardware that makes them great at ray tracing. But remember, traditional cards have been terrible at this. This is why Nvidia can claim the new RTX cards are 10 times faster. They, they will be, actually, but only using a new type of graphics technology that doesn't really exist out in the world right now and that they were built to exploit. All of the Turing cards will also support the Virtual Link standard, which will let a single USB-C shaped port deliver power and video for VR headsets. In terms of raw power, we expect these chips to be about one and a half times faster than their predecessors, and up to two times as fast if they use Nvidia's new deep learning super sampling. This does mean the 2080 Ti should easily be the fastest gaming card out there. Deep Learning Super Sampling, or DLSS, is a cool new piece of tech exclusive to these cards, and it runs on their AI-focused tensor cores. DLSS is a form of anti-aliasing. That's the graphics technology that tries to keep the edges of graphics from appearing blocky or jagged. Nvidia has to craft DLSS for each title by running gameplay footage through a supercomputer and training it to upscale the images from 1080p to 4K, for example. And after thousands and thousands of runs, the supercomputer can build an algorithm specific to that one game, which will be downloaded to your computer. Anti-aliasing has traditionally been pretty performance intensive and a big part of producing great graphics. And by shifting the work from the GPU to the tensor cores, Nvidia claims DLSS will look as good as traditional techniques without putting any strain on the GPU. Now, we've seen DLSS in action on a 2080 Ti, and it is very impressive. It creates sharp edges on graphics without any of the softness or blur you sometimes get from some anti-aliasing solutions. With all these technologies, it's really on the developers to choose to implement them. While I'm sure we'll see DLSS and ray tracing coming to more games, right now the list isn't that long. DLSS is going to be implemented in a few games that are already released, including Ark Survival Evolved and We Happy Few, and ray tracing will be supported by the upcoming Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Metro Exodus. The Metro series in particular has had 
excellent graphics. So we are especially excited to see how the new installment will look with all that ray tracing goodness. Now, one of the only upcoming games that says it will support both new bits of graphics tech is MechWarrior 5, the long-awaited follow-up in the classic series. So look forward to giant robots blowing each other up with some amazing lighting and crisp edges. It's also worth pointing out here that NVIDIA has announced a lot of proprietary graphics tech in the past, and most of them have totally failed to really catch on. PhysX is used in a lot of games, but you'd kind of barely notice it. Uh, it wasn't used for much other than adding more garbage to the streets of the Arkham games, as far as I could tell. And Hairworks was supposed to be a big deal when it showed up in The Witcher 3 and Far Cry 4, but it's only really seen spotty support since then. Either way, I think we'll see the technology around RTX and DLSS showing up in more games. After all, hair in games has gotten a lot better, hair works support or no. But the games industry has historically favored tools that don't lock you into one brand of graphics card. So even if the base performance increase is only 30 to 50%, it's kind of amazing to see these new ray tracing and tensor cores coming to a consumer device. With Microsoft's DXR Ray Tracing API, we are gonna start seeing this tech in games one way or another, and the use of tensor cores is legitimately exciting. NVIDIA has already shown that deep learning can be used to improve rendering, and AI processing in games could do some crazy things. From foveated rendering in VR to dynamic rendering, where a game adjusts the resolution and the quality settings depending on where you're looking or the contents of a scene. All of this new graphics tech is going to take some power to run. The 2080 will require 215 watts of power, and the 2080 Ti will burn through an impressive 250. To be fair, this is about in line with what an AMD Vega 64 uses, but one of Nvidia's brags has always been its low power draw, so upgrade those PSUs, people. The 2080 and 2080 Ti are expected to be released September 20th for $999 and $699, respectively, with the 2070 coming in October for $499. Check out the rest of our articles on the new RTX cards on Engadget.com.